And folks, this one simple move that this family would have done could have saved them $125,000 in estimated taxes. When planning a retirement, it's no longer just about growing your investments. What's allowed you to be successful up until today is not going to get you through the next 20 or 30 years in retirement. Now you need to be thinking about how you're going to remain financially independent. How will you make sure you're minimizing your taxes so you can keep more of what you've earned? These are questions we help our clients with every day. And one tool that's been very helpful for them is the use of Roth as well as tax aware distributions. If you still have doubts, here's a screenshot of one of our clients. By implementing these various strategies we were suggesting to them, they were going to reduce their taxes by around $400,000 and be able to increase their liquid assets by about a million dollars at the same time throughout the course of retirement. So you can see it's really powerful to implement these kinds of strategies. And yes, it did mean that they were paying more taxes over the next couple of years, but only a small increase for future years because they were already planning to use some of this money from their portfolio anyway. So you can really see the potential benefit by implementing these correctly. Now, I've also made another video when you should avoid the Roth and We'll put the link in the description if you've not yet seen that one. One great opportunity to use the Roth is when you begin to see market volatility. We know that when the markets drop, if you can stay invested, you're likely to have the opportunity of recovering that loss as long as you're invested properly. But let's say this happens inside your traditional account or pre-tax retirement account. And let's assume the account drops in value and then eventually recovers back to even again. So to keep the numbers simple, if we had a million and a half dollars, that went down to maybe 1 million and back up to a million and a half dollars, you're back to even, no problems. Now, of course, you have to remember that this full one and a half million is totally considered taxable, right? So any dollar that comes out of this account, you're gonna owe ordinary income tax on the full amount. But I want you to think about what if instead of riding out the markets and growing your accounts back up, what if we still had the same one and a half million dollars that reduced to a million dollars, except in that moment, you were able to convert maybe 250,000 of that to Roth. So instead, now you might actually be sitting on something like $750,000 in pre-tax traditional with $250,000 inside the Roth. And now let's assume that the markets did recover, but you were the most aggressive inside the Roth because we've talked about this before, right? In other videos I've discussed, you want to get the most growth inside a Roth because all of that growth gets to be tax-free. So let's assume that that 250 grows back up to a full $500,000 in the Roth and the traditional portion is now back up to a million as well. You still have the same one and a half million dollars that you started with, except because you implemented a Roth conversion along the way when the market was actually suppressed, now you're sitting on 500,000 of that money as completely tax-free to you with only 1 million of it that's considered taxable. Where before, if we just allowed that to recover, we were sitting on the full one and a half million dollars of taxes. And if we assume an effective tax rate of about 25% after federal, state, whatever, we're looking at the 1.5 million, assuming no more further growth from here, about $375,000 in taxes. Whereas down here, we're looking at only 250,000 in taxes. And folks, this one simple move that this family would have done could have saved them $125,000 in estimated taxes. Now, I know this is an overly simplified example, but it's just designed to get you to understand how this concept works. Riding the markets back up with your money inside the Roth effectively transfers your assets from being tax deferred to being tax free. And all of this comes to you with a greatly reduced tax liability like the example we just reviewed. Now, this is one that you need to be ready to effectuate when market volatility comes around. So that's why it's important to have your financial plan in order well ahead of time. If you've seen any number of our videos, then you've heard me talk about how tax rates are currently historically low. Not to mention the current tax laws also have something called a sunset provision, which means the law is going to expire here in two years. And the way that the current law is written is that in 2026, we're going to go back to the old tax rates that we had prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. 
So here's what you can expect. We're looking at a three to 4% for most people. And here's the key. It's not just an increase in the actual tax rate, the tax brackets are changing as well. So in fact, while it may look like you're paying only 3% more on your money, there's actually going to be a much larger part of your income that's subject to these higher rates because the brackets are going to be compressed further down. This is the rates that we had prior to the current rates. So in reality, a much larger part of your income is being taxed at a higher level, which actually translates to an overall percentage that's much greater than what we're seeing here. And of course, the compression is happening in the brackets where most people live, because that's what we do, we hit the middle class. So this is a great example of things that are beyond just the investment selection that matter tremendously in helping you to really maximize your retirement plan. I call it the child's penalty. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, this has to do with the SECURE Act. The SECURE Act changed the way that beneficiaries are inheriting retirement assets and introduced an accelerated distribution schedule. People are going to have to pay more taxes faster. The law change requires beneficiaries receiving retirement assets that they have to deplete the full account by the 10th year. There's a couple of exceptions for this, but for the most part, it affects the majority of Americans. So what's the challenge in having to take money out of these accounts within 10 years? Well, if you think about when do people tend to inherit retirement accounts from their parents, it's usually when they're in their late 50s, early 60s. That is right around when they are at their peak earning years, meaning they've never made as much money as they're probably making at that point. So obviously that also means they are in the highest tax bracket that they've ever been in. Now, what do you think happens to their marginal tax bracket, which is the bracket in which their next dollar earned is gonna be taxed at? If they were to inherit something like $500,000 or maybe even a million dollar retirement account, and now they have to take out one tenth of the account if they spread it out evenly, over the next 10 years. Well, money coming out of retirement accounts is taxable, right? So obviously that means their taxes are going to go up. But wait, they're already in a high tax bracket. So what does this additional taxable income do to them? Maybe a family is right around this area here, paying medium tax brackets, but now because they inherited a seven-figure retirement account, many of our clients are projected to leave that kind of money to their heirs. Remember, you have to adjust for inflation too. They may be looking at maybe $100,000, $125,000 in annual distributions that they have to do on top of this income. And where does that put them? That puts them all the way to the 400, possibly even higher. Now these rates are from last year, guys. The graphic hasn't been updated yet, but you get the picture here. They're stuck in these higher tax brackets for the next 10 years. Because remember, they have to pay taxes on that by the end of the 10th year, the whole account has to be liquidated. And so think about how much of that family legacy is now no longer going to stay in the family and instead is just gonna vaporize towards taxes because your heirs may have been stuck inside these tax brackets that are high for a whole decade while they're dealing with that inheritance. So this is huge, folks. For some people, we're looking at possibly 40% all in in taxes that on those retirement accounts, 40% of the legacy that you leave behind and that's only just really in today's tax brackets if you factor in federal and state income. All right, and as a bonus, I'm gonna fire off several other benefits that also come with some Roth planning, and we're gonna go rapid fire here just so I can put them in your awareness and you can be thinking about them as you plan your retirement as well. The first one, Roth IRAs have no RMDs unless a non-spouse inherits them. Why is it important? We just talked about this. Your beneficiaries get to save on taxes if they're inheriting tax-free assets. Yes, Roth IRAs do still have an RMD if the kids are inheriting it, but at least there's no taxes on that money. The next one, your Roth doesn't affect your modified adjusted gross income or your MAGI. This is a tax planning item that is incredibly important because it affects a lot of things like a net investment income tax or capital gains. It affects Medicare, all sorts of things. The next one is you can also increase your familial wealth greatly if you are paying the taxes on a conversion from assets that are not actually in the retirement account. So if you have another brokerage account, savings, anything like that, because the idea is if you take 500,000 and it gets converted and only 300,000 actually converts to Roth because you owe the rest on taxes, then that's less money that's growing for you tax-free. Versus if you take 500,000 and you convert the full 500, pay the taxes from outside money, now you have half a million dollars for you that is growing totally tax-free much more beneficial if you can afford to do so 
and your plan allows for it. And next, the Roths are really the best kind of legacy that you can leave behind even better than life insurance, in my opinion. So life insurance proceeds uh, can be great because they are tax-free to beneficiaries. However, a Roth IRA is also tax-free to a beneficiary and they can allow it to remain invested and growing for them tax-free over that decade until they have to liquidate the full amount. So I hope this was helpful. And if you learned something, hit the thumbs up for us, share it with one of your colleagues. And until next time, stay wise and stay wealthy.